Hey, what's up YouTube? My name's Tanner and today we're going to be talking about Apple's next firmware release, iOS 17.1, when to expect it, what it includes, everything surrounding it, as well as a brand new release from Apple today. No, unfortunately, it's not new iPads. It's just a new Apple Pencil. So let's get into it. All right, so starting off, let's talk iOS 17.1. It's going to be Apple's next major release. It's actually coming soon, and today they seeded the release candidate version to registered developers. And the RC version basically just means it's pretty much ready to go. It's the version that's going to be released to the general public. Now, iOS 17.1 is interesting for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it fixes a radiation issue with the iPhone 12. That's something I don't think I I ever thought I'd say, honestly. But yeah, essentially over in France, Apple has been banned from selling the iPhone 12 until they can figure out a solution. And it looks like that's coming with iOS 17.1. And also on top of that, there's a weird and random imagery tension issue. So for those of you who don't know, iPhones and specifically the higher end version of iPhones have used OLED or organic LED displays since the iPhone 10. That was the first iPhone model to include it. And they kept it just toward the higher end versions for a little bit of time. And so I'm not going to go over which models do and do not have OLED displays. But basically with that technology, a lot of people were concerned that there was going to be burn-in or imagery tension. And it's exactly how it sounds. It's when a certain element is up on the display for too long, it essentially burns in. And when that element is no longer present on the display, it is still there. You can see it. It's like ghosting. And this issue is really prevalent on TVs or early OLED TVs, that is, whose owners basically watched a lot of news because you can see those certain elements that news programs use just burned into that display. So people were really concerned with the iPhones that that was going to happen all the way back when the iPhone 10 was released, which if memory serves was probably somewhere around 2017. I don't know, I'm not gonna look it up. So fact check me on that. If it's not 2017, there will be a little comment on the display. But essentially, that didn't really happen. Apple was really good about managing burn-in or imagery tension on the iPhones, which is why I'm so shocked that years later now here with the iPhone 15, there are users who are reporting complications with burn-in on their iPhones. I just, I can't believe it. And what's even more perplexing is that allegedly it can just be fixed with a software update because 17.1 will rectify that for those users who are experiencing that complication. So look out for that release and as for when it can be expected we'll get into that but first let's talk other features ios 17.1 will also add a new component to airdrop that will allow content to continue to transfer over the internet when you step outside of the traditional airdrop range there's also a new standby option and controls for the display and when it turns off for the iphone 14 and 15 pro models there are a few smaller changes to the music application and there are some bug and security improvements okay so sounds great sounds like a solid update because it fixes issues that really shouldn't have been issues in the first place so when is it going to be released to the general public and when can you expect to install it on your iphone so according to french regulatory group a n f r i think let me check a n f r yep they say that Apple will release it no later than October 24th. Now, that doesn't mean that October 24th is the official release date. However, sounds pretty likely. So expect it sometime either on or before October 24th. So it's basically just right around the corner, right before Halloween, you can expect to install Apple's next major release. Now, there were some rumblings the other day in the Apple sphere that essentially Apple was going to release new iPad models and possibly a new Apple Pencil. Well, some of that kind of came true because Apple did in fact do the latter. They released a new cheaper Apple Pencil that drops a lot of features and also finally fixes the horrible, horrible 
charging situation with the first generation Apple Pencil. The second generation exclusive to some of the higher end iPads basically just snaps on the side and that's how it's used to charge and pair. However, the first Apple Pencil is even still used to this day for new iPads that Apple sells at the lower end of their range. So hopefully that will be solved now because there is now a new third generation Apple Pencil, which really shouldn't even be called a third gen Apple Pencil. And I don't even think it is, but it's Apple's third Apple Pencil. So I don't know. What else are we going to call it? It's just the new cheaper Apple Pencil, and it's now on sale with a price tag of just $79. And instead of charging how the first one charged, the cap just slips off to reveal a USB-C port, which is now used for pairing and charging. It's got a similar matte finish. And on top of that, they basically dropped the pressure sensitivity. Again, the magnetic pairing and charging, as well as double tap, to change tools and there's no engraving option either. And also to be noted, it does not work with that new hover feature on the latest iPad Pro models. So it's a pretty good option for those who are either on the fence or who have that base iPad wanting an Apple Pencil who don't already have one. But that's about it. That's everything I really wanted to talk about that I found interesting in the world of Apple today. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Hopefully you guys liked this video. I'll catch you later and uh, until then, Hope you have a great day. Peace.